So today I'm going to do a quick overview on how to use a color checker or other color target with the color calibration module in Darktable. Um, this is not a new feature. It's been around a while. I'm running the current release version of 4.6 here, um, but it's not something I see talked about too often or see really video examples on how to use. Um, so, well, here you are. Um, this is, um, again, 4.6, the latest release version, but it's back in at least 4.2, maybe 4.0, maybe even 3.8, I can't remember. But anyway, um, so that's what we're going to do today and uh, we'll get right to it. First step is to actually use your uh, color target in the photo. Um, this thing here, yeah, this little doodad here. Actually have it in your bag and accessible and a note or something that tells you to use it. If you're like me, it is left at home, forgotten about, or in another bag, fallen out in the car, um, parts unknown, abducted by aliens, whatever. Um, but if you actually have one, actually have it, uh, put it in the frame. Um, ideally you want it in the center of the frame and covering about 50% of the frame. I have not done that here because, well, this is a YouTube video, um, you know, trying to catch everyone's eye. So anyway, boring color target probably won't do it, <laughs> but also, um, you know, that's kind of best practices that and I'm, we're going to show you here that you can get pretty good results, even if you're not following 100% best practices. Um, the other good ideas are to have it evenly lit by the source, light, primary light source, or whatever mix of lights that you have going on. Um, so, you know, you want it to have about the same uh, across, uh, uh, same brightness across all of these uh, color target squares. You're gonna want to have um, no glare or reflection or any kind of weirdness between um, your camera and and these targets because that'll mess with the hue or it'll mess with some other value associated with the color and it'll make the target come out funny um, so those are the few things that you need to look for at uh, shoot time now this is the default set of modules that are enabled um, upon import um, so those are okay to leave as is for the time being um, the only one i would add to it is lens corrections particularly if you did not get the um, target centered and all of that if it's near an edge where there's maybe some vignetting or distortion that might mess with the target and the color calibrations module ability to do its job the lens correction module should um, help you get that out um, this is just a default um, this is for a pretty popular camera and lens combo so it's already in the lens fun database if your lens and camera are not in there you'll have to add it manually but uh, that's definitely something you should do next step is to actually do the calibration step so we come down here to the color calibration module which is already the default on in the scene referred mode um, and then you come down here and it's kind of a hidden feature but if you come down here to calibrate with a color checker and you expand that down it's kind of a hidden feature i think um, it's, not, it's not as prominent as it should be probably um, you want to select the right chart. So this is an older color checker. I think this is like a 2013 model. So, you know, color x right color checker um, pre-2014 is the right one to get. Um, and you can pick an, uh, an optimization path here. Uh, I think the default is neutral colors uh, or saturated colors. I like to have a little bit of more pop. So, and that tends to get me better results to that. Um, you really want to change these optimizations if you do the calibration step here and it gives you a bad result um, instead of a result that is good uh, and it literally says bad or good so first thing we need to do here is get this lined up so we're going to drag these circles on each corner until we line up these squares with the hues and the, the hues and and uh representative in these squares here so we're gonna do that all right that looks pretty good zoom it in there so line that up with these little marks on the side of the color checker i know the color checker software for like lightroom does this automatically but um you know this ain't lightroom so okay. you get a little bit more control but you also have to kind of do some things yourself so you want to make sure those squares basically cover the boxes um, so you know kind of drag it around there get it to that you can also uh, change the size 
of the patches so you know i just wanted to fill those much as i can i'll drag that there make sure we get that you don't want any edge you don't want any of this edge plastic in there contaminating it um yeah okay so that looks pretty pretty good maybe a little slight adjustment here all right so that does it um you can check for the output delta e and so anything over i think about 2.3 is considered um bad so <laughs> this is a very badly color corrected image so uh an average of 7.4 holy cow that's that's a noticeable shift in colors um i think anything below one the exact numbers are on the dark table um manual but there's i think about 2.3s where it becomes a noticeable thing um so now we're going to recompute this profile and this is what i was talking about earlier um <clears throat> it says profile quality report good if for some reason you do this recompute um the profile and it comes back as bad uh try optimize try recentering your your squares here try changing this to one of these other settings um you know i use saturated colors or neutral most of the time the average and the maximum delta e there's some specific reasons to use those um you know to deal with larger er larger eras i think is like the idea behind maximum delta e um in fact we could do that and show you here and recompute the profile and it's still good the input delta e is has changed let's see what was that before you did it kind of doing this as i go so you know it tries to pull that adjustment a little bit in all right so a little bit to deal with the uh the extremeness of this so um uh, so we're just gonna leave it at saturated colors and then after it's done you accept the computer profile and set it and you notice that the the colors in the image change so we went from this out the gate to this which is a bit better looking i think at least on my monitor um, you can still change the white balance so if you come in here <clears throat> you can select your 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 dripper tool here and select one of your squares your whites or your gray target squares on the color checker do, 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 to get a more acceptable white balance that does not look right we'll go with that one that looks better to me um no it doesn't but you, you know these squares here are for setting your gray targets so you can come through here set one of that get a little bit better then we can go there to there I'm still not so happy with that white balance we'll kind of here and change that again select this white piece there there we go that's a little bit less red so we went from there to there and you can still adjust this a little bit it's a best fit it may not uh, exactly be correct and that looks a lot better so but it gets you closer to the ballpark, especially in these mixed lighting scenarios or something like that. Now that you have that set, you'll notice that in here it says recommended uh, exposure compensation is 1.46, oh, yeah. Um, so ideally you would take some bracketed shots with this color checker in your photo um, to adjust, to to have like a, uh, to help the, the, uh, the program find the best fit uh, I didn't do that but you can just yeah, kind of hack it you know I'm a hack fraud so we're gonna go with that and you can come into exposure compensation here and move that up um, 1.46 as the suggested com uh, get there do, 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 1.4 wait get that 4.11 four, five, six, Oop, back close enough, five, nine. So that's where <clears throat> the, that's where the module computed the exposure should be for these colors to be uh, more correct. So um, you can just use that recommended kind of uh, exposure compensation to, again, help you get your, get your image in good shape before you start doing your color. Um, your color grading and all of that other stuff all right so now that you set this in this image um probably not an image your client wants probably not an image you're going to want to put to social media this is very much just like a you know 
uh, test image. So uh, we go up back out to the light table module and we come into the history stack section here on the right hand corner and we do a selective copy and I'm going to select um, none and then I'm going to select exposure and uh, or excuse me, just color calibration for the time being um, because the exposure might be a little different on some of the other ones. So, and click OK. And then any image that you took with this camera in this light, um, light situation here, you can apply. So I've got a mix of Fuji and Nikon RAWs from this. Uh, we'll scroll down and find a Nikon one that's, uh, yeah, agreeable. There we go. And then we just do a selective paste and I leave this mode on a pinned. Otherwise, if you've done anything else to the image, it will like wipe it out. So, you know, either do this first, either do this selective paste first or um, change that to a pinned or both and do a selective paste. OK, you notice the image change there we will pop in and adjust the exposure. This is probably OK to put up the one or six. Um, doo -doo -doo. So I probably could have brought the exposure with me too. Um, two, one, four, six. There you go. Perfect. So um, there you go. There's a good starting spot. You can come in here and start doing a uh, lens correction. And this one's one where they don't have it. So I'll have to make an adjustment for that. I haven't done that yet, but I'm going to crop it anyway. So the vignetting doesn't really matter. Crop it in. Uh, go into Filmic, do some adjustments. We'll just have it kind of auto set some levels for us to kind of get us in the ballpark. Pull that out. Um, then we'll kind of come into here. Add a little contrast, a little bit of latitude. Uh, let's see. So we want to go to shadows or highlights. Uh, I want. I think I want. Uh, I want more room in the shadows. Highlight saturation. Do I want basically the highlight saturation? It's quick, dirty here. Do you want bleached out highlights? Go this way. Do you want highlights that have uh, some color to them? You need to go to the positive. So kind of depends on the image. I think I like it about there. Um, come into tone equalizer and do a little bit of do a little bit of tweak in there. Kind of get that a little brighter. I might even come in and doctor up the color calibration a little bit there we go kind of bring that more where that background isn't so um isn't quite so pink we've got a pretty usable photo in a quick few steps you know i might go in and um tweak around with the, to the the tone equalizer here a little bit bring that bring that up maybe not quite that much bring that down a little bit in there just give it a little bit of good contrast i like some i like some contrast in my images but we've got a pretty easily uh, replicatable color treatment we can put on all these photos from this particular shoot. Again, thanks for watching. Hopefully this quick little video will get you using that. And um, I'll see you all the next time.